In this video, I'll be going over engine management for the P51. Okay, so first we have these two levers here on the left. This big one here is the throttle, and that little one is the propeller. So first let's go over the throttle. Um, this controls how much gas and air goes to the engine. So obviously the more you push the throttle forward, the more fuel and air will go in, and the more powerful the engine will be, and the faster the plane will fly. Now there's this gauge here called manifold pressure. As you adjust the throttle, you, it moves this gauge. So when you push the throttle forward, obviously there's more pressure in the engine, so the gauge goes up. So basically you always want to have the uh, meter here in the green section whenever you're just cruising around and your engine should be good. You can bring it out of the green section if you want into this section. However, you can only keep it here for 15 minutes at a time so you don't overstress the engine. And if you're wondering what the red line is, that is the maximum you can take it uh, during takeoff. Now there is a way to get the needle past the red line, which is called war emergency power, but I'll talk about that later. Okay, so now we have the propeller lever, which is this one. This lever changes the speed of the propeller. The more you push it forward, the faster the propeller will spin. So basically, um, when you move the lever, you'll see this meter here moving for the RPM. You basically set the propeller to the speed you want and the engine will try to keep the propeller at that speed. So the rules for this is the same as the throttle. As long as you keep the needle in the green section, you're good. If you get into combat and you need to go faster, you can um, take it out of the green section if you want to. But whenever you're cruising around, it should be in the green. And the red line, if you're wondering, is just the max that it will go. So these two levers here, the propeller and throttle, are the ones that you're going to be using the most 99% of the time but I'll go over the other ones just in case. So first we have this red lever here called mixture. There's three positions, cutoff, run, and emergency. So cutoff cuts off all the fuel, so that's just used for shutting the engine down. Run, or the middle position, is what you want this to be in 99% of the time. In run, the carburetor will choose the right amount of fuel to put in the engine, and um, you basically just always want it in run. And then the last one is uh, full rich. The, the thing that controls how much fuel goes to the engine is the carburetor. So if the carburetor breaks, you can put this to full rich, and it will just put a constant amount of fuel into the engine. The problem with that is it puts a lot of fuel in and wastes a lot of fuel, um, but if your carburetor is broken, there's nothing else you can do. So basically, in summary, just keep this in run, always. Okay, now we have these two switches right here. You can click these black covers to lower them. So first we have the oil cooler. I would recommend always leaving this switch in automatic, but you can manually, manually close and open it if you want to. In case you're wondering, what this adjusts is the oil temperature, which is this one right here. And also, in case you're wondering, whenever you're moving that oil switch, there's this little door right here. You're actually opening and closing that door. But I would just leave it in automatic. And then there's this one, the radiator cooler here. So there is a liquid inside the P51 that cools the engine, and this switch controls the temperature of that liquid. You can see the temperature of it right here, coolant temp. This switch is the same philosophy as the oil cooler. I would just recommend always leaving it in automatic. However, you can manually close and open it if you want to. And in case you're wondering, whenever you close and open it, you are closing and opening this big door in the back right here. Now keep in mind, in the manual, it recommends that when you're on the ground, you have these both manually opened all the way to keep it as cool as possible. But in DCS, I've never had any problems with that, so I would just leave it in automatic. So let me just close these switches right here. Okay, now we have this big black lever. You can see all the way forward it says ram air and back it says filtered air. So 99.999, you're gonna have it all the way forward for ram. So that means the air for the engine will be rammed through a little port in the front. Now, if it's super duper duper dusty outside, you can pull it back to go to filtered air and it will close off the front port and the air will come in through these filter ports on the side um, so dust doesn't get in the engine. But in DCS, I don't know if that can even happen. So I would just always have it on ram air. Now, the other thing you can see here is this thing, this other small lever, normal and hot air. So if it's super cold outside and um, the front port is freezing, what you can do is you can pull the big black lever back to filtered air, and then you can pull this little one back to hot air, and it will send hot air into the engine so it doesn't freeze. But 99% of the time, you're just gonna have both of these levers all the way forward. Okay, so now I'm gonna be going over the supercharger. So the supercharger is basically something that increases the pressure of the air going to the engine. So you can control it with this switch here. You first lift this cover, so down, it's gonna be in automatic. So I would recommend always leaving it in automatic mode. And the way that automatic works is that 
Whenever you're at low altitude, the supercharger will be in low power mode, but whenever you go to a higher altitude, the air up there is thinner. So I don't remember what it is. I think it's like 10,000 or 15,000 feet. Once you cross that, then the supercharger will automatically kick into high power mode. So if you put this switch to the middle position, then it goes to manual low. So what that means is that even if I go to a higher altitude, the supercharger will stay in low power mode. And if you click up here, you can put it to the high position. So this will manually put the supercharger into high power mode. And you can see when it goes to high power mode, this light turns on. Now this is just for testing the high power mode. You're not really supposed to put it in high power mode at low altitudes. I would recommend just always leaving it in auto. Now you can see right now I'm in low power mode, but I'm going to go to a higher altitude and you'll see it automatically kick into high power mode. Okay, I don't know if you saw that, the supercharger just activated. You can see whenever it turns on to high power mode, the pressure jumps up. So you've got to bring your throttle back to go back to the green. But you can see the lights on, so it's on high power mode now. And it activated it around like 16,000 feet. Now keep in mind, it's not always going to be exactly 16,000. It just kind of depends on the pressure of the air. But around 15,000 feet, it should go into high power mode. So that is what the uh, supercharger is for. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to go over is war emergency power. Let's say there's like five Messerschmitts behind you and you just need to get away and you just need to, uh, as much power as possible to fly away as fast as possible. Well, what you can do is you can go to war emergency power, which will let you bring the manifold pressure past the red line. So first you need to bring your, to go into war emergency power, first you need to bring your propeller lever, which is this one, all the way forward. So we bring our RPM all the way up. And then you need to bring your throttle all the way forward, but you see there's this little, I don't know if you see it, there's this little wire right here. So in real life, they had to slam the throttle forward to break the wire, but obviously you don't want to slam your throttle in DCS. So in DCS, there's a button you can click. If you go to your key bindings here, you need to find this button, War Emergency Power, and you need to bind it to something on your stick. So what you can do, you need to bring your throttle all the way forward, and then you need to click the button and after I clicked it you can see the uh, string is broken now so after you clicked it you bring your throttle back and then you can bring it all the way forward and you can see now my manifold can go past the red line now keep in mind according to the manual you can only be running war emergency power for a maximum of five minutes um, so you don't overstress the engine so this is only for absolute emergencies so that was the P51 engine management tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.